Hey, I'm Brandon Grazley. I teach high school computer science, and I'm going to give you a quick explanation of UML, Unified Modeling Language, for showing all the components of a, an object-oriented application. Um, here I've got an example of a simple dice game, sort of like Yahtzee, even a little bit simpler than that. Um, and I have a component right here, a, a class called Dice Game which is the main application part. And then I have another class over here called die, the singular of dice. And because each die in the game, there are five of them, you can see right here, will, will be represented by one of these objects. And it can do things like roll, and you can ask it its current value. That's the get value method that you see right here. So UML is, uh, each of these boxes is a class. There you can see four of them up here right now. And Within that, I have a few uh, little regions. The first region up here is the title of the class, the name of the class. Then I have all of the fields. Those are like the variables for the class for each object. And then down here, I have all of the methods for that class. And now you can see Dice Game is a class that is an example of a JFrame. It extends JFrame. So it, it is a JFrame, plus it has all of this extra stuff. So it's like a special super J-frame. Uh, and the way this is, uh, the way we talk about this, the J-frame is the super class, and the dice game is the subclass. And over here, a die is an example of a J-label. It's a special kind of J-label, which also has these specific um, fields and these specific methods, these extra things that it can do and extra things it knows. So every dice game gets five copies of die. It has five different dice objects. And you can see down here in the list of uh, methods for dice game, there's a constructor which takes no parameters. Uh, the main method, which is just the, uh, the method in Java that starts any application. We have a start new game method, which is void. So that would uh, maybe perhaps create our dice or reset them to some value if we're beginning again. And update all, which is just a way for um, when you call this method, when you think things have changed in the logic and you want to just make sure that the graphical user interface is all up to date. And so I want to talk about that for a minute. The dice game itself does two jobs here. It is both the logic, game logic um, engine, and it also manages the user interface. And so you see here in the list of methods, there are kind of two types. Here we have the current level and the player's score and a bunch of die objects in an array those are needed for the game logic, just to know the current game state and um, to, to have that information available. And then we also have down here labels, the level label, which is a J label, and the score label, another J label, which are ways for us to tell the user, this is your current level, this is your current score. Now you'll notice that the values here, level and score, are stored in two ways, one as an int and one as a label value. But the die serves two functions it has both value and a graphical user interface component. It is a JLabel after all, because it extends JLabel. So it stores a value and it has an icon, a visual representation, uh, and then it does some other stuff. So in this version of the game, die is, forming, uh, die is serving two purposes and dice game is serving two purposes, both to manage the game logic and to display the current game state to the user and to also get input from the user, for example, uh, mouse clicks. So this is not the only way to design this though. Um, and in fact, for a simple game, it's fine. But as games get more complicated or any application gets more complicated, this isn't actually a great way to do it. If you start to have difficulty um, while you're coding, if you're having some problems with the game logic not working out, um, if the interface and the logic are in the same place, sometimes it's hard to tell where the problems are occurring. Also, if you have multiple people working on the same um, application, they're working in the same class here, and so they've got to kind of wait for each other or do a lot of copying and pasting of code. Uh, and there's some other ways to manage that as well, but um, it's much easier if we're working in separate classes on separate tasks. And so I have another version for you. Same idea, but this one has an additional class introduced. So we still have Dice Game and we still have Die, but right here we have a new one called Dice GUI. And Dice GUI has taken on the labels. So there's a level label and the, the player score label right there. And it also has a copy of that dice array. And it's in both places, you see, the same uh, pointer to the same five dice right there. And Dice Game and Dice GUI can see each other. So what this does, this separates out the logic in Dice Game 
from the way it is displayed to the user. This allows two separate people to work on those components uh, without having to even really talk to each other as long as they know what the other person's um, uh, class is supposed to be able to do. Now you see dice game. When I've realized I've left something off here, I'll add it in in a second. I can see dice game has a copy of GUI. It has uh, a pointer right here, a reference to dice GUI. And dice GUI should also have a reference to dice game. And I just realized when I made this up that I, I missed something here. I need to have a reference to die, and I also need to have a reference to the original dice game. And that needs to be stored as well. So I will store, maybe I'll call it game, and it is a dice game. Now the reason we need that is because there is a uh, there is a method here called update all. It's the same as before. It says, hey, update all of the um, user interface components, update the score and things like that. Well, the way it, this works, when this method is called, which happens periodically, dice GUI will follow this reference back to the game and say, hey, what's the score? And you see I've introduced two new methods here, get score, and another one, get level. It doesn't need to ask about the dice because it can just look at the dice directly following this pathway using the dice array that it knows about. Now the die still serves two purposes. It stores a value as an int, which the dice game will get at by calling the get value method right here. And it'll, it can be rolled, which the dice game will also do. But dice GUI doesn't need those methods. All it needs to do is display this thing. And remember, this is a J label. So as long as its icon is up to date, right here, then all dice GUI has to do is plunk that in and make sure that it's being displayed properly. It doesn't need to do anything to the, to the die. It just leaves it there uh, displayed on the screen. Uh, so for example, when that when uh, dice game wants to roll the die, it calls that roll method and then maybe the get value method to find out what the value is so that it can update scores and things. But when that roll happens, the die itself will update its own icon to show, maybe it showed two pips before and now it shows five pips, so it'll put a new picture there. And dice, dice game knows that that may be a change. It'll say to dice GUI, hey, go ahead and make sure that you are correctly displaying everything. And that may not even be necessary depending on the timing of whatever you have. But in any case, we call that and dice GUI updates the level label and the score label and perhaps has to do something with the dice depending on your implementation. So everything is separated into the two components, logic and user interface. Uh, and there are a few more methods I didn't list here. For example, in the game, perhaps you click on a button to perform a roll, or maybe you click on a die uh, to have it roll. And when you do those things, you got to tell the game, hey, the user is trying to has clicked here and is trying to do something. And the game decides whether that's a valid move. The user interface doesn't make a lot of decisions. It's very passive and it just passes information along. The dice game itself is the one that makes all the decisions that decides what's a legal move and what should happen in the game. Okay, so let me show you back the original one here. This one is a little uh, smaller. It has fewer classes in it. It has the disadvantage of having everything in one place though, which makes it harder for a team to work on and sometimes harder to separate out uh, when things are going wrong. This one is, looks slightly more complex, uh, but um, separating out the logic from the user interface is a good programming move. It's good for design and allows multiple people to work on the same project uh, a lot more easily. Um, and it makes it easier to find bugs when there are some. I didn't mention, but the, uh, let me do this right now. The J frame, all it does here when you run your dice game using the main method, this is just sort of the window dressing. This is your title bar and your you know close button and your ability to resize a window. Um, but dice game will create a dice GUI and plunk it right into the middle of the J frame. And this is what you actually see and interact with as a user is the GUI itself, which is a J panel. The J frame is just the, as I say, the window dressing. Okay, well, UML is pretty great for this. Uh, there's definitely more to it. This is a, a very quick version of the most basic components. Um, I use draw.io, which uh, is a nice plugin or extension for my Google Drive, and it saves, you can see it saves stuff automatically as I, as I change things. This last change was three minutes ago. Uh, and then you can use the export feature to get a, just a straight image out of this, which is pretty nice. Uh, and because it's on Google Drive, this is something that multiple developers can share 
you can work on this together and make copies of and track your version history. So I highly recommend draw.io. Use UML to uh, design your applications so that you can see all the pieces and know what everything is supposed to do and everybody on the project can work on their own component. Thanks.